In this section, we're going to consider the dual problem. And these are linear programming problems where we are trying to minimize a function with problem constraints of the form greater than or equal to. In order to solve these types of problems, we're going to use the concept of matrix transposition. So let's remind ourselves of that definition. If we have a matrix A, the transpose of A, which we call AT, is formed by interchanging the rows and the corresponding columns of A. So the first row would be interchanged with the first column, second row with second column, and so on. So if we have the matrix A, which is a 2 by 3, row 1, 4, 2, 0, row 2, 5, 1, 3, then the transpose of A, um, row 1 would become column 1, row 2 would become column 2. So we now have a 3 by 2 matrix with row 1 being 4, 5, row 2 being 2, 1, and row 3 being 0, 3. So that is going to be a key element in this section. We're going to solve minimization problems with problem constraints of the form greater than or equal. To use this method, the coefficients in the objective function need to be non-negative. If they're not non-negative, then we will come up with a way to do that a little later. Each of these types of minimization problems with greater than or equal problem constraints has an associated maximization problem that we call the dual problem. So first we're going to look at steps to solve or to form the dual problem. So the procedure is to use the coefficients and constants in the problem constraints and the objective function to form an augmented matrix with the coefficients of the objective in the last row. Next, we're going to transpose A, and then we're going to use the rows to form a maximization problem with less than or equal problem constraints. Now, to find the solution of a minimization problem with the simplex method, assuming that we have non-negative coefficients in the objective, we first make sure that all the problem constraints are written as greater than or equal to inequalities. So we may have to make some changes. This may introduce negative numbers on the right side of the problem constraints when we do. Step two is to form the dual problem. Step three is to write the initial system of the dual problem using the variables from the minimization problem as slack. So for these, we will not use S1, S2, S3. We will instead go back to the original problem and we will use the X's from that problem. Then we're going to use the simplex method to solve the problem. And we read the solution of the minimization problem from the bottom row of the final simplex tableau. This is different than our other problems where we use the final column. We're going to use the bottom row. If the dual problem has no optimal solution, the minimization problem would have no optimal solution. For our first example, we're going to minimize C equals 40x1 plus 12x2 plus 40x3 subject to the constraints 2x1 plus x2 plus 5x3 greater than or equal to 20 and 4x1 plus x2 plus x3 greater than or equal to 30. And we know that x1, x2, and x3 are non-negative. So we have a minimization problem with greater than or equal constraints where the coefficients of the objective are non-negative. This means we can use the dual method. Notice here that we have three variables, x1, x2, and x3, and two problem constraints. To form the dual problem, we first form the matrix A. So in row one, we list the coefficients of the first constraint. And we, this is an augmented matrix. So row one is two, one, five. And in the coefficient constant column, we have 20. 
Row 2 is 4, 1, 1, 30. And then we use the coefficients of the objective, 40, 12, and 40, in the first three rows. And then because there's a 1 in front of our C, 1 goes in the last row, last column. To transpose this, we're going to interchange the rows and columns. So because column 1 in A is 2, 4, 40, that becomes row 1 in the transpose of A. So in A transpose, we have row 1, 2, 4, 40, row 2, 1, 1, 12, row 3, 5, 1, 40, and row 4, 20, 31. So now we form the dual problem. So we're going to use different letters this time. We're going to switch to Y's. And so row 1 gives us 2Y1 plus 4Y2 less than or equal to 40. So when we change the dual, we change the inequality sign. Row 2 gives us Y1 plus Y2 less than or equal to 12. Row 3 gives us 5Y1 plus Y2 less than or equal to 40. And we get our new objective function from the last row, and we're going to call this max P equals 20Y1 plus 30Y2. And our Y1 and our Y2 are non-negative. So as we said in our original problem, we have three variables and two constraints. In our dual problem, we have two variables, y1 and y2, and three constraints. So we're going to use the dual problem to form the initial system. So as I said before, we're going to use the variables from the original problem as our slack variables. So we get 2y1 plus 4y2 plus x1 equals 40 y1 plus y2 plus x2 equals 12. 5y1 plus y2 plus x3 equals 40. And we rewrite our objective function. So we get negative 20y1 minus 30y2 plus p equals 0. And all of our y's and all of our x's are non-negative. So let's form our initial tableau. So we have our y's in order, y1 and y2, our x is in order, x1, x2, x3, p is our objective, and then we have our constant column. So row 1 becomes 2, 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 40. Row 2 comes from the coefficients of problem constraint 2. So that is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 12. Row 3, 5, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 40. And our last row is our objective function row. So negative 20, negative 30, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So now we want to use the simplex method to solve. So notice at this point, our basic variables are x1, x2, x3, and p. When we look to the left of the p column in the bottom row, we see that we have two negative numbers, negative 20 and negative 30. So we're going to choose negative 30. So column 2 is our pivot column, which makes y2 the entering variable. Now above the negative 30, all of the elements are positive. So any of those rows are a possibility for our pivot row. So let's figure out which one it is. So we do the quotient of the number in the last column 
divided by the number in the pivot column. So 40 over 4 is 10, 12 over 1 is 12, 40 over 1 is 40. Because 10 is the smallest quotient, and that came from row 1, row 1 becomes the pivot row, which makes x1 the exiting variable. Now remember, the pivot element is at the intersection of the row and column, and that's a 4 in this case, but we want that to be a 1. So we're going to have to use row operations. So we're going to multiply row 1 by 1 fourth to gain a new row 1. So our new row 1 is going to be 1 half, 1, 1 fourth, 0, 0, 0, 10. And the other rows remain the same. Now, once we have a 1 in that spot, we now want zeros throughout the rest of the column. So we're going to use more row operations. So to change row 2, we're going to use the command negative r1 plus r2. To change row 3, we're going to use negative r1 plus r3. And to change that negative 30 to a 0, we're going to multiply row 1 by 30 and add row 4 to it. So that gives us the matrix row 1 is 1 half, 1, 1 fourth, 0, 0, 0, 10. Our new row 2 is 1 half, 0, negative 1 fourth, 1, 0, 0, 2. The next row is 9 halves, 0, negative 1 fourth, 0, 1, 0, negative 30. And our last row is negative 5, 0, 15 halves, 0, 0, 1, 300. Notice that our basic variables are now y2, x2, x3, and p. But is this tableau optimal? Can we find a negative number in the bottom row to the left of the P column? And the answer is yes, we can. So this is not an optimal tableau. So we're going to do another pivot. So there's only one negative number. So we only have one choice for pivot column, and that's column 1. So that means that Y1 is about to enter the basis. So now let's see if we can find a pivot row. So looking above the negative 5, above that line, all of them are positive, so all of them are eligible. So let's do our quotient. Now we want to be very careful here. It is a common mistake to say that 10 times 1 half. Remember, we're doing a quotient, so the first one would be 10 divided by 1 half, which is 20. The second quotient is 2 divided by 1 half, which is 4. And the last quotient is 30 divided by 9 halves, which is 20 thirds. So 4 is the smallest number. So that means that row 2 is the pivot row. So x2 is going to exit the basis. Now remember, the pivot element, if it's not a 1, we want to make it a 1. So because it is a 1 half, we're going to multiply row 2 by 2. So this gives us a new matrix, row 1, 3, and 4 remain the same. Row 2 now becomes 1, 0, negative 1 half, 2, 0, 0, 4. Now once you've got a 1 in the pivot element spot, you need zeros throughout the rest of the pivot column. So we're going to have to use more operations here. So the operation that we use to transform row 1 would be negative 1 half row 2 plus row 1. For row 3, we will use negative 9 halves row 2, add that to row 3 to get our new row. And to get rid of the negative 5, changing that to a 0, we will perform the operation 5 row 2 plus row 4 
to replace row 4. So this gives us a new matrix, row 1 being 0, 1, 1 half, negative 1, 0, 0, 8, row 2, 1, 0, negative 1 half, 2, 0, 0, 4, row 3, 0, 0, 2, negative 9, 1, 0, 12, and the last row, 0, 0, 5, 10, 0, 1, 320. So our new basic variables are y2, y1, x3, and p. Now, if we were solving the dual problem, then y1 would be 4, y2 would be 8, and the maximum p would be 320. But remember, we are solving the minimization problem. So we want to know what x1, x2, and x3 are. And to get those values, we look at the bottom row. So you see that this is optimal. Minima minimizing c gives us 320. In the x1 column, at the bottom, we have a 5, so x1 is 5. In the x2 column, at the bottom, we have a 10, so x2 has value 10. And at the bottom of the x3 column, we have a 0, so x3 has value 0. So the solution is that c is minimized when x1 is 5, x2 is 10, x3 is 0, and the min c is equal to 320. So let's just test our understanding. So given the minimization problem, min c equals 21x1 plus 50x2, subject to 2x1 plus 5x2, greater than or equal to 60, 3x1 plus 7x2, greater than or equal to 85, and x1, x2, non-negative. It's a dual problem. Max p equals 60y1 plus 85y2, subject to 2y1 plus 3y2, less than or equal to 21. 5y1 plus 7y2, less than or equal to 50, and y1, y2, non-negative. And the final optimal tableau, with row 1 being 0, 1, 5, negative 2, 0, 5. Row 2 being 1, 0, negative 7, 3, 0, 3. And row 3 being 0, 0, 5, 10, 1, 6, 0, 5. We want to answer the following questions. First, we want to find the optimal solution of the dual. So to find the optimal solution of the dual, we look at the basic variables. So the basic variable that represents row 1 is y2. The basic variable representing row 2 is y1. And the objective will always represent the last row. So the dual problem max p equals 605 when y1 is 3 and y2 is 5. To find the optimal solution of the minimization problem, we're going to look under x1 and x2 to get the values. So minimization problem has solution min c equals 605 when x1 is 5, because that's the number at the bottom of the x1 column, and x2 is 10. Now, one good question is, what do we do if we don't have all the problem constraints being greater than or equal? So looking at this problem here, we're trying to minimize c equals 5x1 plus 4x2 plus 5x3, plus 6x4, subject to x1 plus x2, less than or equal 11, 
x3 plus x4 less than or equal 25, x1 plus x3 greater than or equal to 20, x2 plus x4 greater than or equal to 15, and all of our x's are non-negative. So notice we do have in the objective function all non-negative coefficients. Two of our constraints are greater than or equal, but two of them are not. So the first thing we have to do is rewrite the first two problem constraints to be greater than or equal to some number. And remember, the way that we change an inequality symbol is by multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So we're going to, um, in this particular problem, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So we get negative 1x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to negative 11. So that fixes problem constraint 1. Multiplying by negative 1, problem constraint 2 then becomes negative x3 minus x4 greater than or equal to negative 25. So we are now ready to form our A and our A transpose. So we have in row 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 11. Row 2 comes from problem constraint 2. So 0, 0, because there are no x1s or x2s in that problem constraint. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 25. Problem constraint 3 x1 plus x3 greater than or equal to 20 gives us 1, 0, 1, 0, 20. And from problem constraint 4, x2 plus x4 greater than or equal to 15, we get 0, 1, 0, 1, 15. And in our last row, we use the objective function. So we have 5, in the x1 column, 4 in the x2, 5 in the x3, 6 in the x4, and I have 1c, so I put a 1 in that final position. Now I transpose a, so the columns of a become the rows of a transpose. So row 1 of a transpose is negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 5. Row 2 comes from column 2 in A. So that makes row 2 in the transposition negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 4. Row 3 comes from column 3, so we get 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 5. Row 4 comes from column 4. So 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 6. And then we have negative 11, negative 25, 20, 15, and 1 as our last row. So we're going to use this to form the dual problem. So when we change to the dual, this changes to a maximization problem. We're going to change our variables to y's and our constraints to less than or equal. So we have max p equals negative 11 y1 minus 25 y2 plus 20 y3 plus 15 y4. Subject to the constraints negative 1 y1 plus y3 less than or equal to 5. Negative y1 plus y4 less than or equal to 4. Negative y2 plus y3 less than or equal to 5. Negative y2 plus y4 less than or equal to 6 and all of our y's are non-negative. So remember, the dual problem was formed using the coefficients in the transposition of A.
So in our initial system, we want to gain equality by adding slack variables, and we're going to use the variables that were in the original minimization problem. So our new problem constraint 1 becomes negative y1 plus y3 plus x1 equals 5. Negative y1 plus y4 plus x2 equals 4. Negative y2 plus y3 plus x3 equals 5. Negative y2 plus y4 plus x4 equals 6. And we rewrite the objective. So 11y1 plus 25y2 minus 20y3 minus 15y4 plus p equals 0. And all of our y's and all of our x's are non-negative. So we can form our initial tableau as you see here. Notice this is not optimal because we have negative numbers in the bottom row to the left of P. So we're going to need to perform a pivot. So if we look in that bottom row, negative 20, that's the most negative element. So that occurs in column 3. So column 3 will be the pivot column. And above that, notice that row 1 has a 1, and row 3 has a 1, but row 2 and 4 have zeros, so those cannot possibly be pivot rows. We need only consider row 1 and row 3 as options. Both of those give us 5 over 1, which is 5. So we can actually choose either row 1 or row 2 as the pivot row. You will get the same answer in the end. I chose row 1. So notice that my pivot element is a 1. So all I have to do is get zeros in the rest of the column. So I use row operations, negative R1 plus R3 to get a new R3, and 20 R1 plus R4 to get a new row 4. Now the matrix I get is still not optimal because to the left of P in the bottom row, I've actually got two negative numbers, negative 9 and negative 15. So because negative 15 is the smallest number or the most negative, that will be the column that I choose. So that is in the fourth column. So column 4 is the pivot column, which makes Y4 the entering variable. So there is a zero in row one and row three, so I don't consider those. Row two gives me a quotient of four over one, which is four. Row four gives me a quotient of six over one, which is six, so I choose the smallest. So that means that row two is the new pivot row, which means that x2 is gonna exit the basis. Notice that I already have a 1 as the pivot element, so I just need zeros in all of the rest of the positions in that column. So I'll use row operations, negative row 2 plus row 4 to replace row 4, and 15 row 2 plus row 5 to replace row 5. Once again, this is not an optimal tableau. I've got a negative number to the left of P in the bottom row. Now this time I only have one negative number, negative 24, and that is in column 1. So column 1 is the pivot column. In the pivot column, we have a negative 1 in both row 1 and row 2. So those are not eligible to be pivot rows. So let's just consider the last row 3 and row 4. So 0 over 1 is 0, 2 over 1 is 2. So 0 is definitely smaller, so that means that row 3 is the pivot row, which makes x3 the exiting variable and y1 the entering variable. 
Now we're fortunate here because once again, one is the pivot element. So we do not have to change that, but we do have to get zeros in the other positions in the column. So we will use row operations R3 plus R1 to replace R1, row 3 plus R2 to replace R2, negative R3 plus R4 to replace R4, and 24 R3 plus R5 to replace row 5. So that gives us this new matrix. But once again, this is not optimal. We see that in the bottom row, to the left of P, we have a negative 4. And that is in column 5. So we have a pivot column. So now we'd have to decide if we have a pivot row. Well, in the pivot column above the line, we have a 0, negative 1, and negative 1 in row 1, 2, and 3 respectively. So none of those are eligible to be a pivot row. Remember, it has to be a positive value. Row 4 has a 1 in it. So the quotient is 2 over 1, which is 2. So row 4 is our pivot row. This means that x1 is going to enter the basis. x4 is going to exit the basis. 1 is the pivot element in this case, so that is fantastic. All we have to do is get zeros elsewhere. So using the row operations R4 plus R2 to replace R2, R4 plus R3 to replace R3, and 4 times R4 plus R5 to replace R5 finally gives us an optimal tableau. So as you can see here, in this optimal tableau, Y3 is the basic variable representing row 1, Y4 is the basic variable representing row 4, Y1 is the basic variable representing row 1, and x1 is the basic variable representing row 4. The objective should always be the basic variable representing the last row. Now, if we were trying to solve the dual problem, then we would want to know the values of y1 through y4. But we are trying to solve the minimization problem. So we want to know the values of the x's. So we look in the bottom row. And we see that we have x1 equals 0, x2 equals 11, x3 equals 20, x4 equals 4, and our minimum c value is 168. So let's look at one more problem. So we're going to minimize c equals 49x1 plus 63x2 subject to 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 3 and negative 5x1 minus x2 greater than or equal to 8 where x1 and x2 are non-negative. So we have a minimization problem where the coefficients in the objective are non-negative all of our problem constraints are greater than or equal, so we are ready to set up our matrix A and transpose it. So matrix A, we have row 1 from problem constraint 1, so 3, 1, 3. Row 2 comes from problem constraint 2, so negative 5, negative 2, 8. Row 3 comes from the objective function. So 49, 63, and 1. To transpose this, my new column 1 and row 1 are switched. So my new row 1 is 3, negative 5, 49. My new row 2 is 1, negative 2, 63. 
and my last row is 3, 8, 1. So let's form our dual problem. So we're changing to a maximization problem, so we're just going to change our letter to P instead of C. So max P equals 3Y1 plus 8Y2. So row 1 tells us the coefficients of one of our problem constraints. So that's 3Y1 minus 5Y2 less than or equal to 49. Row 2 gives me y1 minus 2y2 less than or equal to 63, and all of my y's are greater than or equal to 0. In our initial system, to gain equality, we're going to add the original variables as slack. So we get 3y1 minus 5y2 plus x1 equals 49 y1 minus 2y2 plus x2 equals 63, and we rewrite our objective. Remember we want p to be positive, but we want it to be equal to 0. So we have negative 3y1 minus 8y2 plus p equals 0, and all of our y's and all of our x's are non-negative. So this gives us the following initial tableau. We list our y's in order, our x's in order, our objective, and then we have our constant column. Row 1 is 3, negative 5, 1, 0, 0, 49. Row 2 is 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 0, 63. And our last row is negative 3, negative 8, 0, 0, 1, 0. So now we need to decide if this is optimal. Well, when we look on the bottom row to the left of P, we do have negative numbers. Since negative 8 is the smallest or the most negative, column 2 is the pivot column. Now, when I look in column 2 above the line, I have negative 5 and negative 2. So because those are not positive, I do not have a pivot row. And if I don't have a pivot row, I do not have an optimal solution to the dual problem, which means I also have no optimal solution to the minimization problem.